All right, Real Estate Runway family. Today, we're going to talk with my friend Daniel Martinez, and we're going to focus on land deals. So we're actually going to talk about how you can acquire small pieces of land or even large pieces of land from those who just don't know what to do with it and actually chunk it up and make it subdivided and and more valuable to those who would have an appetite for the piece of land you're looking at. So let's get into this and check it out. Before we do, folks, if you get any value out of the show, hit up that like button, subscribe, leave a comment, just interact with the show because that's really the only way that we get to more people just like you. So pay it forward, share the show, write a comment. We appreciate you for doing so. We're on all the socials, guys. If you want to check us out at Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, YouTube. So TikTok and YouTube is at Real Estate Runway Podcast for this show. And all the others are Team Quattro Capital, one word, no special characters, or just visit us at thequattroway.com and you can click right over to it. And folks, we are always open to partnering with you. If you are an investor, you want to check out some of the opportunities that Quattro Capital has, hit us up at the quattroway.com slash invest to register. Someone from our team will reach out and we'll work on getting to know one another and see if that is the right fit for you. So let's get right into the episode. Here we go. All right, all right, all right. Real Estate Runway family, welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Runway podcast. This is your captain speaking. And we have today a good friend of mine, Daniel Martinez, Daniel is in the land flipping business, ranch flipping business, and actually has a tech company that we'll talk about in the end as well. We're in the CRM space. But before we do, we're going to get into Daniel's story. Daniel, welcome to the show. How are you today, brother? Uh, Thanks for having me. I'm glad glad to be here. I love contributing to the podcast niche as a whole. I have have my own podcast and I'm a product of it. So we can talk a little about that too, but I just love contributing to the space. Yeah, stay tuned till the end, folks, and we'll definitely get into Daniel's podcast and the Quattro Questions section at the end of this episode. Daniel, before we get into this, you've got a pretty amazing story. Will you walk through your blue collar to investor story that you have here and, and just where you come from, man? Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually 31. I started entrepreneurship at 25. I was actually a truck driver at the time. I actually was trained by my company. And I knew I wanted to be unsure, but didn't know really what, I, what, I, what I wanted to do. So I'm like, I have a CDL. I understand trucking to an extent. Let me just start a trucking company. So I drove for two years for my company, ended up starting a trucking company, ran that for two years, and uh, I lost my shirt. I was pivot While I was truck driving, I was pivoting into other niches, and I heard real estate and wholesale and all these other cool things I can dive into. Listening to podcasts on YouTube while I was driving, I pivoted into real estate. It took me seven months to get my first deal. I tried houses for a, a long time. I contracted like three houses. They all fell through for different reasons. A seller died. Someone blew up the closing table. Literally, I took the seller to the closing, blew up at the table. My first deal I actually closed was actually a land deal. And I've been doing land ever since. I've just been, found my own little niche and success in land. I've been doing land ever since. I love one thing you said there, Daniel. Folks, we are in a beautiful time where if you want to learn anything, there's probably a podcast or a YouTube channel or some kind of audiobook or something on it. And you want to talk about having probably the best opportunity to power listen and power learn. Try driving a truck across the continental United States day in and day out. You probably have a lot of time to listen. So I know that's not for everyone out there because you, you, some of you have to work at a desk, but man, we have these great little AirPods. You can just stick them in your ear, listen to something in the background, learn by osmosis, focus on learning. If, if there's anything you can do, you can probably learn it via the content out there today, including this podcast. So Daniel, back to you here. You mentioned that you had some trouble with the the housing side of things, trying to get into flips or, or maybe you were buying to rent either way, but you fell backwards into land. What was attractive to you about it? And what did that first deal look like? What were you trying to do to turn a profit on that piece of land? So the house stuff, there was just a lot of competition. I was actually living in Atlanta at the time and I just oh, couldn't. Yeah. I contracted a lot of stuff. I didn't necessarily know what I was doing. One deal, I put up a thousand dollars hard earnest money and I lost a thousand dollars because I contracted it too high with an agent. I, I was trying everything I could and it just wouldn't work out for me, whatever reason. I contracted one. I was right before close. The seller uh, passed away. So it blew up the whole deal. And I'm like, okay, here's another one. And then another one, I took a two closing, t- brought the seller to closing. Literally, the uh, title company didn't do a title search. So like, Right before closing, okay, we got bad news. So there's a credit card lien of 30 grand that blows up your whole deal. I'm like, Congratulations. I'm like, oh, thank you. I just evicted the tenant. I trashed the whole property out. I just did all this work and blew up at the table. All right. So I, I was like, let me switch it up. So me and my partner, 
we actually took the same course and he was in the land. So I'm like, try out land, see how it works for you. So I'm like, all right. So I set up a PPC campaign. So I set up a website with Google ads and just waited for people to come in through there. I ended up hitting a lady from, she lived in Northern Atlanta, but she had a property in Florida. It was getting, it was vacant, getting dumped on vacant little lot, like 5,000 square feet, 4,000 square feet. She's like, I don't want to deal with this anymore. Can you help me out? So I'm like, I looked it up using Zillow. I found I was about, worth, I guess it was around worth 12, 20 grand. So I'm like, if I can get this thing for 12 or less, 12 to 15, I'm, I mean, I think I can move this. So I was like, I want to get it for five. So she make me an offer. So I was afraid to talk to the seller. So I actually emailed her. I'm like, hey, would you take $4,236 and 33 cents? Like, can you just do five? I'm like, yes, boom, five. So I put out Facebook Marketplace. And I found a buyer two days later for 12. And that's how I did my first deal. That's pretty great. So that's land flipping at its best right there. And, and that's, again, less competition. Not everyone understands how to value land or it's not as easy as a, everyone knows how to go look up a house value today, right? And there's a lot of people trying to buy houses, not for investments, but for their own personal use. There's not enough housing inventory out there, hence the housing crisis that we're in and why rental real estate is so good. But competition is a big part of what you're talking about here, Daniel. Since then, you've evolved and you've done multiple land deals and now you're looking at big land and things of that sort. So walk us through that evolution. How'd you go from that first deal, which was in, this, in essence a land flip to generate some cash? What are you looking at these days and how did you evolve to that point? It was an evolution. Like I like land because it doesn't cash flow. I like land because... It carries its own weight of motivation just by owning it. That's paid taxes every year. So actually negative cash flows, most people. And there's more inventory than any other asset class in, in real estate. If you think about it, there's more land than mobile homes, there's more land than houses, more land than RV parks, all everything else. There's more land than everything else. So you got more inventory. A lot of people don't know how to monetize it. So if once you cut that learning curve, you're in a blue ocean, which we love. Everybody talks about blue oceans. Like we're literally in a blue ocean. So one of the things that I, I love about land too is that you alluded to it before this is that a, a three two house in a neighborhood but you can only get one hundred fifty thousand because there's five verifying comps that determine it's one hundred fifty thousand. There's no getting you can over remodel that house you're only going to get one hundred fifty thousand. So it's set in its ways. With land, it can go a thousand to one hundred thousand to a million. Like it can go any direction just because the, the inherent value is based off whoever's the end user slash end buyer is. So me flipping it, there could be a huge end buyer capital thing that I don't even know what it is. So we look at comps, but very loosely. So if we verify the slots maybe worth a hundred grand, if we can get it for 30 or 50 grand, we know we're going to make money. We just don't know how much. So it comes down to that thing. Okay. I might sell this thing for 125 and maybe make extra 25 grand. That wasn't even underwriting. So think of a flip where you have that, you know, where that roof is land has no ceiling. So as long as you have a good margin of safety, you're going to make money. So we did a deal uh, earlier this year in Florida. We thought we we're going to make a hundred grand on it. Ended up closing. We made 40. We're like, okay, we made 40. Oh no, it's a bad day to cry about. Some people do 90 day flips and they make 40 grand. So like you have to build in that margin of safety and you can really create larger spreads by going after larger properties. The average wholesale fee in houses is like 10, 10 to 15 grand right now. It might be 12 grand right in the middle. It's because you're, you can only make so much out of a $200,000 house or $100,000 property. You're capped out. Like you can't squeeze a hundred grand out of a hundred grand property because no one's going to give it to you free. So when you start doing larger assets, you can create larger spreads. So that's why we started going after big land because we can go after larger assets and create huge spreads. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, and so just to clarify, you, you primarily are still with big land. Are, you're selling it off in, in a wholesale fashion. You're not really taking it and developing it, right? You're letting the next guy. Right. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. All we do is add paperwork. So a lot of people like I had to add paint and I fixed the roof and I had to fix the AC. I'm like, all we do is add paperwork. That's all yeah. we do. All right. So let's talk about the big land side of things a little bit. You mentioned why big land, but let's say you go and find a piece of land. First of all, before you even find that piece of land, what are you looking for other than big land? Are you looking for any features, attributes, paperwork that's already in place? What makes a good acquisition avatar for you in the big land and how big is big? We like big land because it can create huge amounts of profit spread and you really don't know how much you're going to make top to the end. But we'll, we go after small stuff too. Like it depends, like we can make money on it. We're going to go after it if, if it makes sense on paper. I'll start off small and work our way big. About two years ago, this is where how we got the idea to make money in cash flow land. 
So remember it says land doesn't cash flow. We make it cash flow. How do you make it cash flow? You become the bank. How do you become the bank? So we did this deal about two years ago. We found like a $35,000 lot. A seller came to us like, hey, I want 15 for it. After hearing that, we're like, most people would jump out at 50 cents on a dollar. Yeah, 15 grand. If he's coming at us at 15, he maybe he'll take less. So we offered him eight, $8,000. No, I have to get 15 for it. I can't do 15. All right, whatever. Cool thing about land is it boomerangs. It always comes back to you because no one's buying it. There's so much opportunity out there. We talked about the blue ocean a second ago. It just comes back to you. So the seller came back 69 days later. Hey, I remember you're interested in my land. Are you still interested? Like, yeah. Eight grand. He's, okay. I'll take the eight grand. So we got him on a contract for eight grand. We put it on a marketplace. He found a buyer in two weeks for eight grand down 500 a month. Eight grand the buyer gave us, right? Jade to the seller. And then we collect 500 a month for five years. That's equivalent to a rental. Most rentals average 200 to $600 of cash flow per rental, but they're, they got CapEx, they got repairs, they got management, they got all these other things that can ruin their cash flow for the whole year. That is net cash flow because it's the bank. You just get paid 500 a month. So that's where our little path grew. So that's a small deal. Bigger deals we've done, the deal in Florida, we took the Ilzo pre foreclosure. It was actually debt in the property. We took it over yeah. for 20 grand. We sold it on the MLS and we made 40 grand. And the prop, the property is worth four, 450. <laughs> yeah. Not a bad day at all. I would say. Okay. Well, let's walk into going from that. You mentioned adding paperwork to the land. And I think you know, in your bio, you talk about subdividing lands. So what is the upper bound? Is there an upper bound to what land you're considering at this size or? No, we just did a deal in June. It was 350 acres, 10,000 acres. So the purchase okay. price was three and a half million. We contracted it back in March. We closed in June. All the lots should be sold in August. We have a, we're set to close sometime at end of August, maybe early September. Okay. But, so let's walk through that one, Daniel. So you found that you said it was 10,000 acres, right? It was 350. $10,000 per acre. Sorry, 350 acres, $10,000 per acre. Got it. 3.5 million. So you bought that. So what did you see in it that you liked? And then what value did you add to it? Because I, I think I got a piece of it by what you just said. What did you do to it to then be able to sell it off? Think of the wholesale model. So you go to Costco, you can buy, and maybe not toilet paper, but you can go buy a big pack of toilet paper and yeah. you might go to the corner store and they sell it each roll of toilet paper for each thing. So it's the buy by the brick model, same model. So you buy large acreage and you subdivide it down into uh, manageable parcels. So think about this, how many buyers out there? And we already talked about how scarce land is and how many buyer pools are out there. So how many buyers can actually afford three and a half million dollars of the land? Very small. Yeah. So we cut it down into 10 to 20 acre lots. Now it's down to maybe 20, 200,000, 400,000. Now we're talking it to a manageable amount where people can afford it. Now we can open up to more buyers. That's how you create that flexibility. So we bought a 10,000 an acre. We're selling it for 20, 20,000 an acre. So we sold some lots for 20. We had a, a big developer ended up actually contracting the last, we subdivided that one into 15 lots and a big developer ended up, we sold four, a big developer ended up buying the other 11 lots from us at a wholesale price. So instead of selling it for 20, we sold it for 12. And that's where I'm making money. So we're projected to make uh, seven hundred to eight hundred thousand dollars on it. All right. So let's go through the details on that. I, I love the the tactical side of this. So you identify this piece of land, and somehow you came up with a three and a half million dollar price. So how did you like start me there? How, how did you decide this is what I'll pay for it to know I've got enough margin on the back end? So generally, we're trying to we try and get a two x value add opportunity. So the it was ten thousand an acre acquiring. We know we could sell it for 20 to 22 selling once we subdivided it down. How did, so you, how have, did you know that? The, were, were, were there comps out there for that? Comps. Or comps? comps. Okay, good. It's yeah. comps that support smaller acreage sizes that people are paying 20 to 22,000 per acre. So okay. once you know that, you can go to the marketplace. I'm like, boom, there's a deal. There's a deal. There's a deal. Literally, I, I with one of my students, I was on like, let me just see how many deals I can find in 30 minutes. I found nine deals on the MLS that were market that were marketed that had money built into the deal. And they're sitting there for six months, a year on the MLS. No one knows what to do with it. You can let a cherry pick them off the MLS without doing no marketing spend, nothing. They're just sitting on the MLS. Yeah. Just because like you said, it's unmanageable to the average buyer, right? 
it's unmanageable and no one knows what to do with it. They don't have the the skill set or the knowledge to make it work. Okay. So then uh, I guess l- let's think about what I would call super value out of this space. Do you ever get into, uh, I'll call it horizontal development. So let's say you bought 350 acres and you can go sell them off as smaller subdivided lots. And that's like almost literally for changing the paperwork, that's free money right there. You can get into maybe getting it approved for R4 housing or something like that. Have you ever had to go that far or do you really just say, I'm just taking it from big to small and that's really the best all the value add I want out of this? We don't actually build anything. So there's different phases of development. So like large into zoning, the zoning into construction into actually complete construction. And then you have selling off. So you have four different phases right there. We do, we generally do phase one. So for instance, we're doing a deal okay. right now. Uh, we bought 10 acres, a lot smaller, mm. but we bought 10 acres for 225. We're turning it into 11 lots and we're selling it all to a mobile home dealer. For sixty thousand a lot, so we're projected to do six sixty minus expenses, and we picked it up for two twenty five. A little Very ten nice. acre lot. Very nice. Okay, that's super interesting. And so, I guess as far as the next part of the episode, let's talk a little bit about the tech company that you have, Daniel. And, and so, yeah, it, this is an interesting combination, right? Because you, not only are you a land investor and you know a lot about how to flip land and make a profit on that by subdividing it. You've also got a pretty interesting product out there. So I'd love to hear why you created HiveMind and how maybe how your uh, your current investing life spawned that. Yeah, we created it. It was out of necessity. I think whenever you're starting real estate, you get to a certain point where you're like, I have to create tools and systems and yeah. I guess I'll get some systems in place because it get, becomes very unmanageable very quickly. The more successful you become. And uh, everybody should have a, a CRM system. I don't care if you use ours. I really don't care. You need something. You have to have something that coordinates, controls, automates follow-ups to your leads. Because if you don't have leads, you're not, you don't have a business. It's the lifeblood of your business. So we use it literally for everything. So like most people, we have a very like unique real estate structure. So like we help other businesses set up their systems, automations, help them create leads. We set up PPC campaigns. We do a lot of the other stuff for them. But like other people come in, hey, I already know how to use this. Let me come in and use the system and I'll text, I'll cold call, I'll run my own PPC campaign and I'll just use your framework. So we help, we have all different types of customers that come in into our system based off whatever needs they have. But the biggest thing is that you need something to coordinate and like do your lead. So like our real estate company, personally, we spend zero dollars for acquisitions because we can pick them up off the LMS. Yeah. We teach students how to pick them up. So they're bringing us deals. So our acquisition is literally zero. So all of our marketing spend or most people spend thousands of dollars a month for marketing, we spend it to find buyers. And that's where our marketing, that's what makes us different. We're totally opposite from everybody else. And we use our, our advertising spend to find buyers, nothing for sellers. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, and you're right. Sometimes you have to build the machine a little bit and then you realize, wow, I've got a good machine here. Let's, I bet other people need this machine too. And I would venture to say that your tool is geared around what you needed in the business as, uh, as a land flipper. And it probably applies to a lot of you real estate folks out there. So in just a minute, we'll talk about how you can uh, check that software out and see if it's right for you and your business. Daniel, let's hop to the Quattro questions. Are you ready to go with me? Let's go. All right. So first one, what is your superpower that could be live for business and how does it serve you well? My superpower, I think is, it's like systems and it's not like I'm the smartest person out there. I think you have the basic understanding of systems and I, I love the math. So I think I, I, I excelled at math when I was in, in, high, in high school. And I think it comes out to help me out with underwriting now with real estate. And I really leveraged that side of it. I wasn't really as much of a speaker until I started the podcast, but I guess I've grown that skill. But for me, it's a systemization, system is systems and underwriting and math. So and my, my partner's good at sales. So I partner with somebody you're not good at. So let's go. Yeah, that's super important. Don't partner with people like you, partner with people who are unlike you. So compliment your shortcomings. All right, let's flip the coin over, Daniel. What is your, what is your biggest failure and what'd you learn from it? It could be live for business. Uh, my biggest failure was actually trucking, man. I, uh, I, I took that one straight on the chin and I'm not afraid to say it. I learned a lot from business though, because I learned how to manage people. I became employees, dealing with employees, dealing with a lot of different tough situations. It just gave me a lot of uh, thick skin and business that I wouldn't have gotten. I would have gotten into real estate eventually, but I, I went down that path where like I went down trucking, 
and had to find another avenue to pivot into and ended up being real estate. So I think it gave me the through all to work through the paint because this is not a real estate's not easy. If anybody that says it's easy, they're lying to you. There's sleepless nights, uh, <laughs> Oh, your wife or spouse holding you, like you got to deal with a lot of stuff, cash flow problems. You have to deal with uh, payroll counseling, your employees. Like you got a, you got a lot of stuff that you deal with as a boss that no one really talks about. Yeah, I would agree to that, brother. And there's, uh, there, there's real estate is great, but there's, especially if you own vertical property, there's a lot of people behind it too. And you, you have to remember yep. you're in the people business, whether you own uh, hard assets or not. So that's a great lesson there. Let's, let's take you to question number three, Daniel. At, here at Quattro, we have four pillars, people, property, profit, and then philanthropy coming back and taking care of people. Sorry, people, property, profits, philanthropy, coming back and taking care of people. I said it right the first time. But I love to give my guests a, an opportunity to talk about your philanthropic heart here on the show, how it is you give back with your times, talents, and treasures. And sometimes people on the show actually will give on your behalf with whatever we put in the show notes. But what is that for you, Daniel? I try, I have a heart for young people. I always, I like helping young people learn more about life and business because I think a lot of people don't, don't educate them and they don't prepare them for what life actually brings to them. Because I know for me personally, those of tweet yesterday, they're talking about like how people just go to college to make their parents happy. And I'm like, it might not be the thing you do, but they didn't prepare them. Sometimes parents don't prepare young adults into that transition into adulthood. And it can hit you very fast and you're not prepared. So I always like helping young people just become more knowledgeable. And I always talk to like my family and young adults. Like I was trying to teach them about business because I have me and my older brother, we actually got into business, but we're the only one people in business in our family. Everybody else is like blue collar still. So I I think just giving back to the young people, my, my oldest daughter is actually going to school. So they actually have a entrepreneurship program. So I'm hoping to teach and educate for the high schoolers in my daughter's school because she's kindergarten, but I can help participate and contribute to the high school. Yeah, that's fantastic, Daniel. It's such a soft spot in my heart for that as well. Let's come to the point where we have our free gift here in the show. Let's talk a little bit about the podcast that you have, and let's talk a little bit about the, I think you have a text gift as well we were talking about earlier. So what are those two things and how can we find them? Yeah, so I actually have a dollar course. It's literally one dollar. You can text course to 210-972-1842. It just talks about the where to get started with real estate. And then we have other courses and products there. We're actually launching a, a free PDF checklist. It's not out yet, but it's coming soon. Maybe I'll offer it. Maybe if you check it out, maybe we'll text everybody when it's available. But free stuff, free stuff coming out. I always like providing education. And then podcasts, podcasts, YouTube, social media. We have almost all Four over 400 episodes released right now. And I just like giving back to the community because like I said, when it comes back to it, if you go back, I'm from trucking. I, I listen to a lot of podcasts, a lot of YouTube. I consume a lot of uh, audio content. So I like contributing back to in that way, back to the community because I'm a product of it. So that way to give back and I think it comes full circle. So I like contributing back. So I appreciate you having me on to help contribute back to the community as a whole and help you find value in this episode and our podcast and other podcasts out there because as uh, us as producers, there's so many people consuming content. It's hard to change that, change, cross the line and actually produce. So I commend Chad here and other people like us to produce and uh, create content in the niche to provide education. I would agree. There's so much good stuff out there. And it really all it is like think about back in the day where you had to read a book to learn something. And that book might have been someone's end of career work that was already yep. for what they know was 10 years old. In a time where things are moving so fast today, you have to have current information. You have to know what's currently going on and what better way than to just listen to conversations like the one we're having right now. So thank you for that, Daniel. And Daniel, the last little bit here on the show, I promised we would come back and talk about hive minds and, and also how to get in touch with you as an individual. So for the listeners, as we conclude here, what is the best way to get in touch with you? And should they want to go learn more about hive mind, please provide that as well. That's the CRM, um, by the way. Yeah, we're at Hivemind CRM on literally every platform, even platforms you think were there, we're there. We produce a lot of content and it's everywhere. We really try and make sure we're on platforms where people want to be. And if, if you're on that one platform, probably check it out, we're there. That's pretty crazy. So there's a lot of effort that goes into producing content everywhere. So I hope you take advantage of it on your favorite platform. And then I'm Daniel Martinez on Facebook. 
Daniel have mine on Twitter. And then you can always get a hold of us through that 210 number, 210-972-1842. That actually goes to my team. So if you have any questions about Hive Mind, our education, literally any question you want, you can ask that question. It'll, it'll eventually go to my team and me. All right, Daniel, thank you for coming on, sharing a bit of your journey and your experience in the land side of things and just even, even some of the mentorship on running a company. So hope to have you back on here in the future and hear about more of these fantastic land deals. And folks, scroll down to the show notes. Everything we just said will be right there for your clicking pleasure. And talk to you next time, Daniel. Thank you. Have a good day, guys. Bye. Wow, folks. I hope you enjoyed that show. That was some really cool stuff talking about chunking up land, flipping land, and uh, how this business is actually counterintuitively spending more money on finding its leads for buyers than it is for sellers. So very interesting stuff. Go check out Daniel Martinez. Check out Hive Mind CRM. See if that is right for you. And don't forget to text the link in the show notes to see if you want to check out his free course for land flipping. Now, if you got any value out of that show, folks, check us out and give us that five-star review, that thoughtful comment, and or just share the show. Just interact with the show. That's the only way you can provide value and share it with somebody else. That's the only way it grows. Folks, if you want to be on the show, we're always taking interviews. You can apply at the quattroway.com slash podcast. And if you want to look at investing with Quattro Capital, we always have things going on. Check us out at the quattroway.com slash invest to come build a relationship and start from there. Until next time, this has been another episode of the Real Estate Runway Podcast. Over and out, friends.